The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Oof. Mm. Let's skip the normal opening. Might have to skip the whole show. Whew. So, uh, as most of you know, uh, we lost our dear friend, our fearless leader, Tom O'Brien, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And like you, uh, and I've been very fortunate to have met so many wonderful people that have really had a positive influence in my life. And every now and then, every now and then, we're blessed to have an angel that uh, helps change the, tra the trajectory of our lives. And that's what uh, that's what Tom, that's what Obi-Wan did for me. And for, for that, uh, I am forever grateful. You know, as you know, I begin my show each day, just couldn't do it today, uh, with a few Stevie philosophies. One of those being, don't be a prisoner of your past, be a pioneer of your future. And, and I know that's how Tom lived his life. I expect that uh, he's gonna do the same in his afterlife. You know, for uh, for each of us, though, uh, for me specifically, um, we first have to deal with the emotions of shock, anger, bargaining, depression, and and finally acceptance. And and when that happens, uh, we can focus on creating something new. And and for that, you know, I will look forward to that day for sure. Um, you know, one of my other Stevie philosophies, you know, I believe that everything in life is happening for us, not to us. As much as I passionately believe this, and I do, I've always struggled with this specific belief at times of death. I mean, really, how can I say to Tommy Jr., to Tommy the Third, to Caitlin, to Bridget, to each of you that Tom's passing is happening for us? I know that over time, those reasons will surface and that will be the time when we can create something new, uh, something that is a real tribute to this great soul. Like yourself, I entered that Hotel California and never left. You know, Tom didn't just touch my heart, he entered it. And that was a gift from an angel. You know, as Tommy said this morning, his dad was a fighter. And I know with certainty, he wants each of us to be a fighter. He wants each of us to be a tiger as well. When disease knocked on his door, he pushed back. So in honor of Tom, please do the same when any obstacle, any obst obstacle gets in your way. May you rest in peace, my dear friend. Mm. But that's not your makeup. And I'm sure right now, Tom is holding a master trader workshop and probably just about to talk about quality volume. And with David White, he's probably on deck getting ready to discuss the Power Law Vector Indicator. Now, it's a class I would normally sign up for, but I'm not going to sign up for that one just yet. So um, I want to thank both of them for the lessons that they have left us with. And with that, let's try to get onto the markets out here. Whew. So right now we've got all the U.S. indices that are traded to the downside. Dow's off 333, S&P's down 36, NASDAQ 122, Russell's off 34, Semi's down 61, Tranny's 219, uh, gold. Gold's up four bucks. What the heck are you doing, Tom? What are you doing up there? Gold's now only up four bucks. You got silver up 60 cents, natural gas down six pennies. He's just letting us know. He's just playing with us. He's just playing with us. Uh, lights recruit up 66 cents. 30 year treasuries down 1.11 ticks, trading out at 118.29 out there. Um, I probably should switch over to that screen. Why don't I do that? See that I'm on the wrong screen out here. Nice job there to get out the bat. 
Uh, leading the charge to the upside, uh, dollar-wise, we've got Road. I've not uh, heard of that, but that's Construction Partners Inc. It's up 13% or 10 bucks. Uh, Aplovin Corp up 10 bucks, 6%. United Health eight bucks, one and a half percent. Elf Beauty seven bucks and six percent. Viad Corp up 17%. That's a six dollar move. Our leaders to the downside. Our monolithic power system is about 46 bucks. That's a 5% move. Cigna's down 14 or 4%. Regenerant Pharmaceuticals, 16 bucks, 1 and 6 tenths percent. Service now, 14 bucks, 1 and a half percent. And Coinbase is off about uh, 9 bucks, 10 bucks. That's down about 4 and a half percent as well. So we have plenty of things to look at. Let's begin by taking a look at the New York Stock Exchange, its advanced decline oscillator. We take a look at it on Friday. Well, it had been trading above for about two or three sessions. It had been trading above at the zero threshold level. You can see we're clearly below that right now. Quite frankly, we are, we're moving down towards that uh, oversold condition in one day. We're not there just yet. Uh, getting there would get us to that minus 150 level. Right now, we're down about minus 92. If we take a look at the spot fix index, it is back above its 50-day exponential moving average. On Friday, we had the spot fix index close below the 50-day. You know, Stevie's cash has this rule out there, which you'd like to see a two-day move either above resistance to break that level and confirm a breakout of some sort or below support for two consecutive sessions. So just because we closed below it on Friday, it being its 50-day exponential moving average on Friday, that was at the 1833 level. We closed down at 1803. Today, we've got the spot fix that's trading out at 1836, and we are trading right now at 1918. So this would be a signal to me that uh, sellers were always in control when the spot fix is trading above its 50-day exponential moving average. Generally speaking, that tells us that the, uh, that the sellers are the ones that have the uh, uh, the edge out here. If we take a look at this chart here, I haven't filled it in uh, uh, since about the end of September out there. But these green and yellow boxes, rectangles, squares, whatever shape it is that they are, the green uh, areas are where the spot fix is trading below the 50-day, the yellow when the spot fix is trading above the 50-day. So it gives you a really great uh, feel for what the market is communicating to you and I. What else do we want to look at? So let's uh, let's uh, you know let's stick here with uh, gold, most certainly in honor of Tom. So let's do this here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch. I really don't have a plan for today. <sighs> Surviving pretty much. Mm. So if we take a look at Goldilocks out here. I'm just going to open up the date. Well, first, if we take a look, those are the two left-hand panel charts. And uh, you can see on the daily time frame, I'll expand it out in just a moment. But you can see right now we're in bar number seven, and you can see there's a road momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. If we take a look at the weekly time frame uh, for gold, you can see we made a higher high today. And what that does, that triggers bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, all that needs to happen on a weekly basis in order for this pattern to continue is price needs to close above the close of bar number four. The close of bar number four was uh, 26.6810. Um, so you've got the potential for a top. Out there now, as I just simply expand out a gold chart out here. Last time that we had a TD9 count top, just just to keep this in perspective out here, that went in and completed on September the 25th out there. The high of that candle of that pattern, in essence, was at 26.94, and then on the very next trading session, we closed at 26.94.90. It was really 26.94.70. And uh, the prior session, so it negated that signal immediately. It's possible that this one will get negated as well. Here's another signal we can see at TD9 count top back on May 17th. That was uh, negated the very following trading session. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. You know, I spent a good part of the, part of the weekend, you know, in my mind getting through the show, certainly getting through the first part of the show without uh, without crying. Um, and I, I thought I could do it. I convinced myself that I could do it. But there's a, uh, a movie out. It kind of comes around the uh, holiday season. Actually, it's called The Holiday. It's got what, Cameron Diaz, Jude Law, I think, in there. There's a scene, as I recall, with Jude Law, and he says to his girlfriend, I think it was Cameron Diaz, yeah, he says, I'm a weeper. Well, Stevie's a weeper, too. I'm a little bit like Jude Law in, the, in that way. But in any event, uh, we're taking a look here at the uh, daily gold contract. And if it does generate – so with regard to the TD9 count tops, that's what we were taking a look at as we went to break. On a daily time frame, it's not like I can really point out anywhere to you that the TD9 count tops have really led to anything of significance. You can see all the way down here back in February in 2024 was a nice TD9 count bottom. We did have a TD9 count top up here in March. And that just simply led to a sideways move with inside its uh, profile level out here. So, But if we do get the road momentum indicators uh, a signal, that's a little bit different. That tends to have more momentum to either side once it forms out there. Now, that might only be just simply pulling back to test support, which in this case at the moment is its oscillator and change line. That would be the first level currently printed at 2714. If price were to close below that, that would be the signal that for the daily time frame, gold has lost some momentum and would it get back into a test other levels of support. Now, the cool thing about the existing profile is that it was a it is a bearish structured profile profile. So Let's assume that gold's going to top today, tomorrow, the next day. We've got that weekly uh, TD9 uh, bar number eight that's out there. Um, if that does, what we or, or whenever gold does form some type of top out here, what we'll be watching for, and ideally there won't be any other profile that forms, and instead we'll see price pull all the way back to 2661.90. If somebody were writing into me right now and said, where is it that's the buy point on gold? Where is it that would be the best buy point on gold? 
out here. I would say wait to see if we get a pullback to 2661. That's typically where a counter trend moves to the downside in this case here would in fact find support. And of course, what we would do there is price, if price were approaching that level, is we'd look to our intraday charts uh, for some bottom patterning signals as well. So that's what's going on on the daily time frame for gold. As I mentioned here, the weekly's got bar number eight of a TD9 count, a bearish reversal candle this week. Would also confirm a road momentum indicator top if you take a look at silver on a weekly basis. This week completes its TD9 count top on a weekly basis. Let's see what we have back. I'm not sure how many bars I'm going to get. Um, we had a TD9 count top that formed out here, here being on a weekly basis. The week of uh, April 12th. April 12th level, what did that do? So you're seeing, you know, you're seeing, I just shared with you on the daily time frame chart what to expect and where price would pull back to. You see, we got that exact same thing that unfolded here with gold. See, the oscillator and change on is green. It's got a TD9 count top. It forms on the 12th. It completes the very next trading session, uh, the week of the 19th. And what's price do? It pulls back and it tests that green oscillator and change line. That was a buy point. Buy point as long as it held. If it didn't hold, then we'd be looking at the uh, buy zone, which would have been 24 69 to 2606 out there. That's the same profile, by the way, on a weekly basis that's still in place out there. So on a retracement from a silver standpoint, on a weekly basis, what silver would be targeting is that oscillator and change line currently at the 3224 level. We take a look at the daily time frame, and this is really courtesy of uh, Basil Chapman, who did a great job uh, kicking off his hour, as did uh, Tommy. So um, sorry that I'm not able to do the same. If we take a look at uh, uh, silver back here, on the uh, daily time frame, um, where was I going to go with this? Well, we can see, as we talk about Basil Chapman, we can see that we have now triggered bar. We really triggered it on Friday, which is bar number seven, uh, a wave wave G, part of the uh, part of the Chapman wave, the rogue wave portion of it. Now, I don't necessarily use that in that way, but I do identify when those levels pop up on our screen. You can see the last time that uh, I see I see a wave number seven uh, signal on a daily basis was back here on uh, May 21st, and that most certainly led to a test of profile support out there. Uh, so now with that, re in order to confirm that pattern, you need to have a, a lower high out there. So let's watch. Now that's on a daily basis. So let's watch to see where uh, silver uh, uh, opens uh, tomorrow. Uh, out there or how it trades during the day tomorrow. With regard to the GDX, so the GDX is going to take its signals exclusively from uh, from gold. Uh, the correlation, and I, I, we can fire up those charts if we need to. Many of you that listen to the show, you've listened to the show a number of times and have seen us pull up that chart and that strong directional correlation. So we're really watching as gold, gold uh, forms a uh, bear shooting start today, roads momentum indicator top. Again, we'd be expecting a retracement back to oscillator and change line support. In the case of the GDX, uh, this is going to be bar number eight. So it could be a top today, uh, quite frankly. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern, small one that I've got in place out there. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a top there. And again, we'd be looking for price to pull back towards this oscillator and change line. That's currently at 41.54. So that's what I see that's going on. By the way, the weekly uh, chart here for the uh, GDX, no topping pattern at the moment. Uh, last week, it negated the Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. See that top there pulled price right back to where. So this is this is great. I didn't even notice that when we were taking a look at uh, gold out there. But here on the GDX, just as an example, you get a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. Let me get my cursor out here. That was the uh, was a bear shooting star that formed on September the uh, 27th. And what did price do? It pulled back. Now, it did in this case here, It uh, uh, the first week it tested, rejected that oscillator and change on. That was a bull signal. The following week, it really did the same, but not until it pushed all the way down to where counter trend rallies would end. Now, the actual low on a weekly basis for the week of October 11th, was down at 38.17, and 38.14 was the actual center line of that uh, bearish structured profile. So there's a, there's a perfect example of what transpired in the past, what to uh, potentially expect and anticipate in the future. Now, we don't know if gold will get down on a daily basis, that 26.61 level, but that... Um, that uh, would be the uh, that would be the next major uh, buy signal out there. Uh, so what do we want to do next? Uh, I know let's 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 continue with gold here and just kind of get a feel for what's going on inter intraday because we certainly have um, moved off of uh, off of the highs. I got the ES mini. We'll come back to that. Let's want to try to try to stay with some kind of congruent thought out here. Oof. So I'm just waiting for the uh, intraday signals to populate out there. Um, <laughs> come on, work with us. I think I've got too many uh, things that are open on my screen. Um, come on. 
All right, so we got the daily shows up. So I'm taking a look at the five-hour time frame chart, waiting to see. I'm sure that we have an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. We've got a uh, bearish uh, reversal candle that is uh, forming right now. This candle is going to go ahead and complete at, I believe it's 2 o'clock, uh, at, at, two, at 2 p.m. So the five-hour time frame chart is suggesting that we may, in fact, I don't know what it's going to look like at 2 p.m. It's only 11.25 right now, that we may indeed have a uh, sell the D point top. We take a look at the, uh, here's a perfect example of four-hour wave number seven signal. Yes, there's an A to B equal CD pattern as well. Looks like maybe about a one to two, as Tom taught us. When you do a one to two A to B equal CD, uh, usually that ends that portion of the move. Doesn't mean that it's totally over, but that typically would end the move for that moment in time. In this case here on a four-hour time frame chart, um, this is suggesting that we would pull back to the 2702-2688 level. We take a look at the other intraday time frames. We got the, that was the 240, the 120-minute chart as a rose momentum indicator signal. Now, this is helpful to us from the standpoint of profile levels and support areas, as is really the 60-minute uh, time frame chart. So we come back from that break. Let's go take a look at Goldilocks, and uh, then we'll figure out what else to look at. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and, most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully.
Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. So we're kind of dissecting and bisecting uh, Goldilocks, looking at the different interday charts here just to get a, a feel for what's being communicated to us. So if we take a look at the two-hour chart, and the current bar is going to complete at uh, 12 noon, so 30 minutes from now. At the moment, the center of that uh, bear structured 220-minute uh, and 120 minute, uh, profile is holding that support. And that number is at 2735. So I don't know if we'll get back to gold uh, before the end of the show, but that's what you'd be looking at at noon. If price goes above that, then you've really got two levels, and then we've got two levels of support that will have hold, two real key levels, quite frankly. So if we take a look at the 60-minute time frame chart, what we'll see here is we'll see a wave number seven pattern. We'll see a roadsman indicator signal. And we can see here that all also, prices pulled back to test support, and that's that breakout level. So even though I gave you the figure of 27.35, the center of that uh, two-hour uh, uh, two uh, uh, profile level out there, what I'd really be watching uh, for today is 27.33. If price closed below that, we should head to the next breakout level. That's a 27.20. Below that, 27.06. So there is a possibility that we have formed at least a short-term bottom or a bottom inside of gold just based upon the two-hour chart the 60-minute time frame chart, and now we've got the 10-minute chart, one of Tom's favorites that is kicking in. And so, in honor of Tom, we can see that we've got a TD9 count bottom that is in place out here. Uh, bar number nine is going to complete here in another eight minutes out there. And now, price is dealing with resistance out here. So the first level of resistance on this little move to the upside is at 27.38.30. If price closes above that on a 10-minute basis, then price will move up to the 27.42 level. If price can get above that, then we should see a rally up to 27.47. That is the top of the 10-minute profile. So that's a beautiful thing. I do like divine intervention out there. I'm glad that uh, Tom was speaking to us with regard to gold on his favorite time frame. We should have known that, should have figured that out. Don't know why I was so... Um, in any event, um, so uh, so now let's watch. Uh, so now I think you've got everything with regard to gold, what's going on, the GDX, uh, silver, I hope. And uh, so let's move on to something else out here. What do we want to move on to? You know, let's do this. Um, let me see if I can come over here and we're going to. Nope, that wasn't it. Darn it. Well, we're going to we're going to use this anyways. And what I'm going to put in here is the uh, that's the wrong symbol is the S&P. Good Lord is the S&P 500. So we have different uh, messages coming from different indices out there, and that's really what's making things a little bit uh, difficult to uh, to interpret, quite frankly. We're going to see here when the S&P 500 chart shows up, we're going to see the weekly time frame, and the weekly, let me get, I've undecorated this chart here, so let me get rid of what is not important. What is most important, though, is the weekly time frame chart. So the weekly time frame chart for the S&P has a uh, wave number seven, uh, top out there, a TD9 count top that completed uh, on Friday. And if we do get a bearish reversal candle at weeks, then you'd have a Rhodes momentum indicator top. But the point that I really want to make right now is on that weekly chart, prices testing that key level of support, that green oscillator and change line. The actual print on that is at 58.27. We're trading right now at 58.27. So we are, with regard to the S&P 500, we are at a possible critical level of support. Now, the problem is it's only Monday. The weekly chart doesn't end till Friday. But if we do start closing below that weekly oscillator and change line, that's going to suggest that we head lower. Now, head lower to where? And that's a great question. Look at the daily time frame chart for the S&P 500. The TD9 count top that it shows is being completed today, and we are already below the oscillator and change line. Now, we don't have profile levels that we can use for cash indices. For that, we go take a look at the ES Mini out there, and we'll do that just so I can give you a feel for where price is likely going to go target. But here in the S&P 500, you can see you've got – now, we have a monthly TD9 count top. Right now, price is trading above the high of that pattern. And that would be a very bullish thing longer term for the S&P 500. So that's something to watch. But where would be the next level of support on the S&P cash indice? If, in fact, the weekly oscillator and change line fails, you'd have to come take a look at the monthly oscillator and change line. And that would be down at 55.02. Um, let me just put the ES mini charts up here. It, will, it will, should populate much quicker. And let's take a look at where those profile levels of support could be on a move lower. And this is what you really want. You don't have to trade the futures, but I do certainly recommend that you get access to them, uh, understand the different patterns. Now, whether it's my patterns or Basil's patterns or Tom's patterns, um, David's patterns, uh, 
Larry's patterns, doesn't matter which patterns, you know, you want to understand where support resists. Oh, you know what I did? I did this on the chart where I keep the profile levels up. So that's why I did pop it. So I'm just going to, I've got it here. Perfect. So here what we can see now, we do not have in the ES mini. Talk about kind of mixed messages out here. The S&P 500 cash indice, absolutely TD9 count top on the daily time frame. We take a look at the ES mini. There is no top. There's no top. There's no, there's no wave number seven. That pattern got negated. There's no roads momentum indicator signal. But that doesn't matter. What we're looking for is we're trying to interpret both charts, identify key levels of support on moves lower out there. And so I'd say if the S&P 500 is trading below that weekly oscillator and change line, the ES Mini right now is testing that. Now, the ES Mini does have that weekly TD9 count top. The daily does not, but the weekly does. Uh, the monthly here, you can see that we're trading above the monthly TD9 count top as well. Um, what I would say here is the next level of support, if in fact those weekly OULs give way, would be down at the 5841 level. Below 5841, we'd be looking at 5802. And below 5802, we'd say there's likely trouble in River City, but we'd watch that weekly profile level of 5785. I would think that would be pretty much the last bastion of hope, of support. If we close below that, we likely then would continue to head lower. Now, what I don't know is what's going on on the intraday basis for the ES Mini. We didn't take a look at those charts, but... Um, but I think that's okay. Uh, what we should do, actually, is let me just fire up the weekly cash indice charts. Because we're taking a look at the weekly charts are actually, some of the weekly charts, I should say, are actually giving us signals to say, hey, be caution, Will Robinson. So now let's take a look at those weekly charts. I'll populate here right now. We'll have about eight of them. Uh, so we have the NASDAQ 100, the NASDAQ composite, the transports, the uh, Russell, the Dow, the S&P. Uh, we probably have the semis uh, as well out there. So these are just going to populate. Now, um, I'll just wait for them to populate. In fact, I'll take a swig of water out here. You can see on the Dow transports, though, they negated their wave number seven pattern. They did that on uh, last week. So it does not have a top out here, but price may be pulling back to 16,005. That's its weekly oscillator and change line. Um, New York Stock Exchange, you can see the weekly chart last week, completed a TD9 count top, much like the Dow Jones, you can see on your upper left, completed a TD9 count top. We take a look at the S&P 500, the same, not so much for the NASDAQ, but in the case of the NASDAQ on a weekly basis, it still has a top that's in place out here. It has a TD9 count top that's in place. I'm just trying to get this thing to open up so you can more easily see that. But clearly, I'm having some issues. What are you doing over there? So here on this weekly chart for the NDX 100, what you can see, as you can see, you had a TD9 count top, Rhodes momentum indicator top. So that's still in place. So I would have to say that the uh, NASDAQ, Lord, what is going on? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm gonna try to figure out my charts. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
tips and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we take a look at the weekly charts out here. Each of these have topping patterns that are in place. Let's start from left to right. You've got the weekly Dow. It's got a, a TD9 count top that's in place, only a close above last week's high. That high being a 43,325 would negate that signal. Price should pull back to its oscillator and change line. 42,596, a close below that, we would see lower price. We've already covered the S&P 500. If we take a look at the NDX, as I mentioned, it's got that TD9 count, Rhodes Mentum Indicator top. That remains in place until we see price close above on a weekly basis, uh, 269097. Russell 2000 has a wave number seven pattern that's in place out here, trying to form oops, trying to form a, a weekly TD9 count uh, pattern as well. Don't know if that will come to fruition or not, but the existing wave number seven pattern is still in place, so a top here. If we take a look at the weekly chart for the Sox, it formed a TD9 count top back on July the 12th out there. That pattern still is in place. TD9 count top for the uh, Dow Jones Transports. That top was formed on August the 4th. August the 4th, that is, of 2023. We take a look at the, the NASDAQ composite. It still has its TD9 count top. That would only get negated with a close above 18,671. And the New York Stock Exchange also has uh, completed a TD9 count top. A bearish reversal candle this week would confirm a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. In the case of the New York Stock Exchange, not that you trade it, but it's certainly worth paying attention to. A close below its oscillator and change line, which at the moment is printing out at, I oh, thought that was going to do it. It didn't. It's going to be at 19.651. Now that will change by pennies or dollars up and down a couple of bucks or so, but uh, that would be its level of support, that green oscillator and change line. So what do we can to check in on this? I am uh, uh, only here at this stage tomorrow. I am uh, at a uh, uh, wedding and a bunch of things going on in New York City, all pre-planned out there. Kind of feel pretty uh, awful, quite frankly, about going. But... Uh, uh, but anyways, I'll try to, you know, we'll at least take a look at it tomorrow, get a feel for where things are uh, trading. So what else is it that we want to take a look at? Any requests out there? I know I haven't asked for a request. I really wasn't sure how this uh, show was really going to unfold. Let's take a look at the euro, the yen, the pound, get a feel for what's going on with king dollar. So on Friday, um, we got a nice little bear sash candle inside the uh, euro out there. Was that confirming anything? And the answer is no, it wasn't. It certainly was not an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. And price had negated its TD9 count bottom pattern on October the 15th. So it looks to me like the euro continues to want to head lower out there. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the price target for the euro, by the way, this has a TD9 count top out here. More likely than not, with the euro signaling to us over time, not in one day, although it could, is a move back to its breakout level. And that's at the dollar seven level, 1.071 to be exact. If we take a look at the yen, the yen on Friday went ahead and confirmed a sell the D point uh, pattern. It was a bear sash candle. And uh, that right now is being challenged. In other words, a high above 150.28. 
and we are at 150.25 right now. A close above 150.28 negates that signal and says we continue to motor on higher. Now, when we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, that motor on higher could easily be up at the 158 level. Now, as the yen moves higher, it's getting weaker. The dollar is getting stronger. As the euro moves slower, the dollar is getting stronger. The euro is getting weaker. And the same thing with the Great British Pound. The Great British Pound negated a TD9 count top. It does not have any kind of a bottoming signal as we speak. Price is likely to head lower. Head lower to where? Well, right now I would uh, target the uh, swing point from the week of August the 9th out there. Uh, so that's the range between 1.266 and 1.281 out there. So it does look like the king is going to continue to move higher out there. Uh, you know, I'd say at this stage here, you still have, even though we've got a pullback, we need to still keep this in perspective. And this by perspective, what I mean, I don't know if it'll pop up on this or not. Um, let me find a better way to do that. By perspective, well, kind of like with gold. I'll just pull over gold since we just happen to be there. By perspective, uh, it's how many uh, days uh, back, how many days higher have we been? So here, if you just take a look at the gold charts, uh, you know, one of the cool things that we learn about consecutive hires, moves higher and, and moves lower out there, is they tend to be between two and four bars. If we take a look at coming off of the bottom back in February of 2024 out here, after that, any moves lower, this is the daily time frame chart we're looking at, we're basically two to four bars, each of them two to four bars. In the case of gold, we're going to be up for, it looks like, well, we may be up for five consecutive days out there. Last time we were up, we were up for seven consecutive days. But we should expect at least some type of retracement to unfold. Now, if I put the E, I wonder if I've got, I'll just do it right here. No, I can't do it right there. Um, you guys don't mind being patient today, do you? Uh, weekly equity futures charts. So let's put these up here on my screen. We'll put the future chart. It's going to have daily and weekly. It's going to have those same consecutive uh, count patterns on it to the upside and to the uh, downside. So we just got to let this here populate. The, I just went to the uh, futures contracts out there. We could do the same with regard to the indices. We may get different data. But certainly we could do the same. So you can see in the case of the Dow, that's the only one that's populated right now. You can see this is just day number one to the downside. So you could easily get a bottom today, tomorrow, or certainly by Thursday out there. So keep that in mind, you know, while I'm not with you. Now, if we exceed four bars to the downside, so here's the Dow. Uh, we can see its moves. We've seen a three-bar move. We have seen a four-bar move, but mostly three-bar moves, two and three-bar moves to the downside. So you would suggest, especially with right now, we've seen the loss of momentum, at least a two- or three-day pullback. That may be the end of it. If you take a look at the uh, ES Mini, same thing here. Let's just simply open up its charts. You're going to see you know, no more than uh, three- to four-bar moves to the downside out there. So let's just keep that in mind. That what's, what, And that this after moving higher, uh, well, the ES Mini only was was kind of jostling back and forth out there. Uh, the weekly basis, the weekly basis here for the ES Mini, we have been up for consecutive uh, six weeks out here, I believe. Um, yeah, six weeks to the upside. So pretty concerted move out there. We have gotten as many as seven, eight, nine weeks to the upside. That was back in uh, the end of the year, uh, back in December, most certainly during the Santa Claus rally time period out here. So you could even get um, a move of a couple weeks to the uh, downside out there, just following the normal dance step. So let's just keep things in perspective as we speak right now and pay attention to the patterns. And this most certainly is one of the patterns for us to uh, pay attention to. Um, let's just see what the heck is here. The 30-year treasury. So the 30-year treasury right now, you can see that it is likely going to close below its TD9 count bottom. That formed on October 14th. The day before was a buy the D point pattern. So that is definitely suggesting lower price. Now, uh, I don't have profile levels. Uh, don't have enough data, quite frankly, to generate a weekly profile level out here. So where is price headed to? What I would do is probably take a look at, I would probably just take a look at the retracements from the lows back in April. Um, of 2024 up to the high. This is a weekly time frame chart we're looking at uh, back in uh, September out there. I, I can't. I don't have really great retracement tool on the Ninja Trader system, but each of you have got your own tools if you're trying to get a feel for where the 30-year uh, Treasury is likely headed to. If you take a look at the 30-year Treasury out here, you know, all that we really got out of this was a two-day counter trend move. We had, we've had we really had two since this thing has uh, topped on uh, September 17th out there. So, uh, okay, so now we do have a price target. Beautiful. So what we've got here is a TD9 count breakout level at 118.07. So 118.07 
uh, is the uh, likely price target to the downside. If we close below that, well, that's a signal that we most certainly head lower. So you don't even have to use the uh, Fibonacci retracement. Stevie opened up the chart wide enough to be able to see that we do have breakout support. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So McGuppy inside our Tiger's Den threw Stevie a little life jacket just to get my mind uh, focused on a chart out here. And I uh, want to take a look at um, Nordic American tankers. NAT is a ticker symbol out there. Now, the question is, will today form a TD9 count bottom pattern out there? And that's a great question. And the answer to that is all going to be about today's close, McGuppy. In order for bar number nine to complete, it must close above the close of bar number five. Well, bar number five what the uh, Nordic American tankers closed at was 354. We're trading right now at 352. If price closes above 354, it could be 354, 355, anything 354 and above, then you will have a TD9 count bottom. Now, what that would suggest then is a rally up to 361. But you asked that question, and, uh, and it's a nice way to sort of end the show out here, if you will, and that is to talk about quality volume. If we take a look at Nordic American tankers and the swing point back here on August the 5th, we can see that the high of that swing point was 350, and the volume there was 3.1 million shares. The low of today is 350. 
So in essence, we have actually tested that swing point by getting right to the T to that level. Now, the volume here as we speak right now at 11.55 is 1.3 million shares. Again, that 1.3 million shares moving into 3.1 million shares. We're pushing into a swing point with volume. Now, you've got profile support as well, and that's at 353. But if we close below that, and we close below bar number five, you will have a TD nine count pattern, yes, but you likely will be trading into a swing point out here. Again, that quality volume out here with, with volume. And that would suggest a test of that low. So why don't we come back to Nordic American tankers tomorrow um, and uh, see what it is uh, doing, McGuppy, on a weekly basis. You also have support out here at the 349 level. On a monthly time frame, you're testing the top of that profile. That right now is old resistance. That is support. And that's at the level 351. So, um, so that's what we've got with regard to Nordic American tankers. Thank you for throwing me that uh, lifeline. So we come to the end of the show out here. I think I will end it this way. Sell when you can, not when you have to. And what you think about, you bring about, and what you focus on grows. Have a great day, folks.